for today will be all about margin of safety and degree of operating leverage. These are the other tools in CVP analysis. So we'll start with the margin of safety. So sir, ano ba yung margin of safety na yan? So margin of safety is actually the amount, once again margin of safety, is the amount by which revenue all right, can be reduced without incurring losses. Once again, margin of safety is the amount by which revenue can be reduced without incurring losses. Ibig sabihin, kaya siya natawag na margin of safety kasi kahit mabawasan yung revenue or yung sales natin by this amount, wala pa rin tayong may incur na loss. Maliwanag ba? So sir, paano po i-compute yan? Margin of safety is actually just equal to, again, margin of safety is just equal to the actual or planned sales kung ano man yung available sa problem, then minus the break even point in terms of peso amount. So sir, ibig po bang sabihin, kailangan ko pa rin makuha dito si break even point? Apparently, yes. So if hindi mo alam how to compute break even point, I suggest that you go back first dun sa video natin kanina or dun sa other video natin. Luanag ba? So here, hindi lang naman margin of safety in peso kinocompute dito. Minsan pinapacompute din ng problem yung tinatawag natin ng margin of safety ratio. So sir, parang contribution margin ratio lang ba yan? Right? Uh, technically, yes, because the computation of margin of safety ratio is just equal to the margin of safety divided by the sales. Ano ba yun? So, sir, kung may margin of safety ratio, meron din po ba tayong tinatawag na break-even sales ratio? That's correct. Meron din tayong tinatawag na break-even sales ratio. This is actually equal to the break-even sales or the break-even point in terms of peso amount divided by sales. Ba? So, if margin of safety is equal to sales minus the break-even sales, expect now that margin of safety ratio is also equal to 1 minus the break-even sales ratio. So, sir, is it safe to assume as well that break-even sales ratio is equal to 1 minus the margin of safety ratio po? Yes, that's correct. And then lastly, Right? Or second to the last, rather, second to the last, asahan mo na kapag in mo din si margin of safety ratio at si break-even sales ratio, since iisa lang naman yung denominator nila at kapag in mo sila, makukumpute mo yung total sales, asahan mo na 100% ang makukumpute mo dito. Lanag? Then one last thing. One last thing. If you want to compute profit ratio, Profit ratio is actually equal to the contribution margin ratio times the margin of safety ratio. We're good? Now, to put into problems these concepts, please now go to the next problem, which is all about break-even point pa din and margin of safety ratio. Or margin of safety, rather. So, illustrative problem number two, Reynaldo's break-even sales are 528,000. The variable cost ratio is 40%. So if the variable cost ratio is 40%, expect that the contribution margin ratio is around 40%. Well, the profit ratio according to the problem is 8%. Very good. So first, paano muna na compute si 528? Isn't it? Break even uh, sales is equal to the fixed cost divided by the contribution margin ratio. So, break-even sales is given, that's 528,000, is equal to the fixed cost divided by the contribution margin ratio of 40%. Right? So, from this computation, we can now compute the fixed cost. So, magkano fixed cost natin? That's 528 times 40%. Again, that is 528,000 times 40%, or that's equal to 211,200. So, requirement number na 1, or letter A rather, is the fixed cost. Now, our final answer is 211,200. We're good. Okay ba tayo dun? 
Next, how to compute net income ulit? That sales minus variable cost is equal to what? Is equal to the contribution margin. Minus fixed cost, compute natin si net income. Right? Ang given here is the variable cost ratio which is 60%. Sales, always yan yung basis, so 100%. Ibig sabihin, 100 minus 60 now will give us the 40% contribution margin ratio. If net income or the profit ratio is 8%, expect now na we, we can squeeze already, right, yung fixed cost ratio. That is 8 minus 40 or this is around 32%. Ibig sabihin, this 211,200 now represents 32%. So, para makompute natin kung magkano yung sales, right, we just have to divide the fixed cost of 211,200 doon sa ratio niya, which is 32%. Because once again, ang basis ng mga to is the sales. So kapag ginross up mo sila, pabalik sa sales, of course, makukuha mo yan. So 211200 divided by 0.32, this is equal to 660,000. So final answer, requirement letter Bravo, is equal to 660,000. Again, requirement letter Bravo, 660,000 is our final answer. Read me? So, profit is 8% of sales. Ibig sabihin ngayon, if sales is equal to 660,000, then profit ratio is 8%. 660 times 8%, that will give us the profit already. So, magkano yan, guys? 660,000 times 8%, this is equal to 52,800. So, requirement letter Charlie, 52,800 is our final answer. Anag. Then, margin of safety. Paano na nga ulit makompute si margin of safety? Sabi natin, margin of safety is equal to the plan or actual sales. That is, 660,000 minus the break-even sales, which is 528,000. We good? So, 660,000 minus 528,000. This is equal to 132,000. Right? So, final answer requirement letter delta is 132,000. Then lastly, right, to compute the margin of safety ratio, this is just equal to 132,000 margin of safety divided by the sales which is 660,000 or this is equal to how many percent guys? 132,000 divided by 660,000. This is actually equal to 20%. So, final answer, requirement letter echo is 20%. Again, requirement letter echo, final answer is 20%. Very good. So, that is the margin of safety. Ay na. Next, punta tayo sa last tool. The last tool is yung tinatawag natin na degree of operating leverage. Again, meron tayong tinatawag na degree of operating leverage. Right? Which is may acronym of course. Na to. Lahat naman may acronym. Tama ba? So sir, ano po meron sa degree of operating leverage? Degree of operating leverage here, we're trying to compute the relationship between the sales and the profit. Because here, we believe that we can compute the percentage change in, right, profit. Once again, we can compute the percentage change in profit by just multiplying the percentage change in sales times the degree of operating leverage. So, ibig sabihin, degree of operating leverage is a multiplier to the percentage change in sales para makompute natin in a snap yung percentage change in profit. So, the problem now is how to compute degree of operating leverage. So, degree of operating leverage is actually just equal to the contribution margin divided by the operating income. So, CM over OI lang tayo. Anag? So, without further ado, to put into problems and to illustrate Degree of operating leverage, let's move on to the last problem for this video. 
So Ralph Company manufactures tires for all tiring vehicles. The tire sales for 60 and variable cost per tire is 30 pesos. Monthly fixed cost is equal to 450,000. So question letter A, what is the break even point in units and pesos sales? So papana papaano na nga ulit i compute yung break even point in units? Once again, that is just equal to the break even point once again is equal to the fixed cost over the contribution margin per unit. So here we have fixed cost of 450,000 divided by the contribution margin per unit. Sir, magkano yan? 60 natin binibenta, 30 yung variable cost. So 60 minus 30 will give us 30. So 450,000 divided by 30, ilang units yan? 450,000 divided by 30, this is actually equal to 15,000 units. Anag? But in requirement letter A, tinatanong din yung sales pesos. So, break-even sales, on the other hand, is actually just equal to the fixed cost divided by the contribution margin ratio. That's 30. 30 yung ating contribution margin per unit, that's 60 minus 30, divided by sales of 60. If I'm not mistaken, 50% ang compute mo doon. So, fixed cost is 450,000, and then contribution margin ratio is 50%, Expect now that 450 divided by 50% or 900,000 will be our break even sales. So, requirement letter A 15,000 and 900,000 will be our final answer. We're good. Requirement letter Bravo if Lucky, the CEO of the company, wants the business to earn. A pre-tax profit of 25% of revenues, how many tires must be sold each month? So here, ang kailangan muna natin i-compute is the break, ah, target sales rather. Ang kailangan muna natin i-compute is the target sales in terms of peso amount. Because profit ratio ang given. So target sales is equal to 450,000 fixed cost. Divided by the contribution margin ratio of 50% minus the 25% revenues or target profit ratio. So, 450,000 divided by 0.25. Ilan yan? 450 divided by 0.25 is actually equal to 1.8 million. So, hindi naman yan ang tinatanong. Yan tinatanong is kung ilang units. Tama ka dun. So, para makumpit mo kung ilang units... E divide mo lang yan, dun sa selling price natin na 60 pesos, compute mo na kung ilang units dapat ang iyong ibibenta. So, 1.8 million divided by 60, this will give us 30,000 units. So, requirement letter, bravo, 30,000 units will be our final answer. Again, requirement letter, bravo, 30,000 units will be our final answer. Next, punta tayo sa Charlie. If the company is currently selling 20,000 tires monthly, what is the degree of operating leverage? Right? So, let's prepare uh, the income statement using, of course, the variable costing method because by behavior, ang classification natin ng cost. Right? So, we have sales. Variable cost is equal to the contribution margin minus fixed cost. compute natin dito si operating income or si net income. You with me? So, sabi ng problem, 20,000 units daw, right, ang ating ibibenta. So, 20,000 times the selling price of 60 pesos, we have total sales now na magkano total sales. Lamin natin. 20,000 times 60, this is equal to 1.2 million. Next, variable cost. This is 20,000 times 30 pesos or this is 600,000. So, our contribution margin now is 600. 1.2 minus 600 or this is equal to 600,000. Then lastly, minus the fixed cost of 450000 our operating income or net income now 
is equal to 150,000. Are we good? So next, let's compute the degree of operating leverage. So the degree of operating leverage, once again, is just equal to the CM of 600,000 divided by the operating income of 150,000. So 600 divided by 150 is actually equal to 4 times. So requirement letter Charlie, ang tinatanong lang is yung DOL, therefore final answer is 4 times. Once again, requirement letter Charlie, 4 times will be the final answer. Manag. Next will be requirement letter Delta. If the company can increase sales volume by 15% above the current level, what will be the increase in net income? Anag ba? Ano sabi natin kanina? Ang sabi natin kanina, percentage change in profit is equal to the percentage change in sales times the degree of operating leverage. Ibig sabihin dito, if there is a 15% change in sales, right, we just multiply that one sa degree of operating leverage, compute na natin si percentage change in profit. Once again, percentage change in profit is just equal to the 15%, that's the percentage change in sales, times the degree of operating leverage, which is 4 times. So, 15% times 4, this is actually equal to 60%. Right? Ang tinatanong sa delta is, what will be the increase in net income? Percentage pa lang to. So, multiply natin sa current net income na 150,000. Asahan mo ngayon that the increase is equal to how much? 150,000 times 0.6. This is equal to 90,000. So, requirement letter delta, right? 90,000 will be our final answer. Again, requirement letter delta, 90,000 will be our final answer. Then last, requirement letter echo. What will be the new net income? Prepare comparative income statement. So, here, let's compute the new net income. So, kung 15% ang in-increase ng sales and currently meron tayong 20,000 na nabibenta, 20,000 times 1.15 is equal to 23,000. Right? So, sales now will be equal to 23,000 times the selling price of 60. So, 23,000 times 60. This is equal to 1,380,000. Minus the variable cost which is equal to 23,000 times 30 or magkano yan? 23,000 times 30 is 600. 90,000. Then 180 minus 690 is actually equal to 690,000 pesos. Then minus the fixed cost of 450,000, the net income or the new net income is equal to 240,000. Magkano in increase? The increase is equal to 90,000 which is just the same doon sa increase na na-compute natin dito. Right? So, that's the use of the degree of operating leverage. So, that's the end of CVP analysis. Hopefully, natuto ka sa video na to. Thank you guys. God bless. Bye-bye.